In a moment, we will speak with Paige McPherson, who saw a teacher with students at a political protest. I, incredible. You, you get, it's a shocking abuse of influence. Take a look. Can I ask what you're protesting today? Uh, for me, the, the big piece is that the government shouldn't be governing for the privileged few today. It should be governing for everybody in the future. And I'm a teacher and a parent, and I really care about what's going to be coming down in the pipe for these, well, literally, for the kids of the future. Okay. These are my students. Your students. So are you a teacher then? I am a teacher. I teach history and theory of knowledge which is a, a course about critical thinking. Um, but as a history teacher, I am concerned about the incremental steps that we're moving in this country towards something that doesn't look very much like a democracy anymore. And these here are your students. So are they, are you guys, this class for you? Class time? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> so this is kind of like a learning experience? Yeah, this is a learning yeah. experience. How do you guys feel about this? Well, I think definitely our environment is being threatened by the policies that Stephen Harper is putting in place. And from the things we've learned in history class, I'm becoming very concerned, just as my teacher said. And do your parents know that you're out here? <laughs> there is a technical word, by the way, for that teacher. Um, let me look it up. Yeah, idiot. Hardly a surprise. And uh, we all remember in Ontario, certainly, when Mike Harris was, was Tory Premier, there were frequent examples of teachers introducing party and partisan politics into the classroom and, and, and virtually, if not effectively, indoctrinating their students into opposing certainly the education policies of the democratically elected twice government of Mike Harris. There are myriad cases of teachers making their politics entirely obvious to their pupils, and those politics hmm, are always of a liberal or leftist nature. In Victoria, B.C., an elementary school teacher Andrea Jones Skinner actually was suspended for five days after encouraging her grade one students to write critical letters to the government during class time. But it's actually extremely rare for teachers to be reprimanded by superiors who generally agree with them and support them. Have a look at this teacher it's from a, a couple of years ago in the United States who has just asked these very small children who they will be voting for if they could vote. Now, one little girl says it would be John McCain. Look what happens. So in other words, Barack is going to end that war in Iraq. What do you all know about that war in Iraq? Talk to you, because your dad is military. Talk. It's a senseless war. And by the way, Kathy, the person that you're picking for president said that our troops could stay in Iraq for another hundred years if they need to. So that means your dad could stay in the military for another hundred years. She should be fired. I mean, I'm not sure what happened, but she should have been fired on the spot. And what a bully as well. Disgusting. Uh, teachers, union leaders, of course, are very powerful and generally even more radical than their members. Uh, none of this should come as any surprise when we remember how political the education system has become and how often children are used as, well, political pawns by teachers for politics in general and for their own labor disputes in particular. Surely nobody still takes seriously the claim that teachers go on strike for the sake of the kids. It's a chant, a slogan spasm, an apology disguised as an excuse masquerading as an explanation. Now, not all teachers, of course. And most of us in media have received correspondence from teachers who are disgusted by the political antics of some of their comrades. But they're intimidated by the bullying of their unions and the aggression of those with whom they work. The thing is, they don't even realize when they're being patronizing and political, you know. Okay, in this propaganda effort, the stone-faced union hack is joylessly explaining how social justice and democracy are at the heart of education rather than math and English. And notice how she keeps mentioning that public education is somehow at the very core of all of it. Why are Canadian teachers pillars of democracy? Teachers promote democracy by educating their students about the valuable role public education plays in the quality of life of all citizens while supporting the common good. 
whether it's teaching civics or participating in activities such as student vote, teachers want their students to become engaged citizens as adults. Their teacher organizations also uphold the principles of democracy through their work, whether it's representing teachers, advocating for publicly funded education, promoting social justice, or fostering better learning conditions for all Canadian students, teacher organizations are at the heart of it all. See if I can do that. But it doesn't matter if they can't read or write as long as they vote NDP. Anyway. There is something actually deeper and more sweeping than this, and it's sociological as much as political. A culture has developed in the past 30 years where teachers assume that they, they are not the parents, are the primary educators and even guardians of the children in their classes. There is something to this, I suppose, in that family breakdown has caused enormous damage to kids' stability and security. But this awful attitude extends well beyond young people from broken homes. Now, we see this particularly clearly in the field of sex education, where teachers and educational bureaucrats have convinced us that only they can properly instruct children in sexuality and sexual formation, and that mums and dads, the people who had sex in the first place, thus bringing their offspring into the world, are suddenly fools and prudes who cannot possibly share their knowledge of birds, bees and condoms with those they love and care for most in the entire world. And of course, the type of sexuality in question, it's not mainstream, standard, usual and loving, but perverse, extreme, dangerous and generally animalistic. Oh, teachers, leave those kids alone. Paige McPherson, Sun News contributor, is in Vancouver. Paige, that, uh, that was brilliant, actually, what, what, what you were saying to, to, and asking of those people who were protesting, because you, you weren't encouraging them. You weren't trying to lead them on. You were just saying, why are you here? Did she at no point realize that you were from the evil, devilish Sun News? Uh, she only asked me what media network I was from uh, at the very end of the interview, at which point she became uh, understandably, uh, maybe not understandably, but expectedly uh, dismissive of me. But yeah, it was definitely an interesting find. I didn't, I sort of just went into the protest to see what I could find. These are actually the first people I came across, and I was shocked. And maybe, I mean, after that monologue, maybe I shouldn't be shocked in my own experiences as well. But I can't believe that a teacher would take young students out of class during class time to protest the prime minister of the country and his policies and then asking those students about, you know, why they're here and saying essentially because what I learned in history class is that the prime minister is bad for the environment. I mean, that is just shocking and so inappropriate to me. Well, I think it depends actually how you recycle Stephen Harp. If you do it properly, he's good for the environment. <laughs> you know, it, it was, they're, they're so frequently like this. They're so arrogant and uh, inevitably thus so dumb when they speak. She says she teaches history and I think it was uh, knowledge theory or theory of knowledge. And Canada is becoming a country that is not democratic. You might not like Stephen Harper. Okay, fine. But our democracy is probably more vibrant than it was in the past. The fact that she can protest and demonstrate and even arguably break the law by taking children out of class to be at a political gathering, there's no threat to democracy. And it could well be the Liberal Party, I hope not, win the next election. She's a teacher. She's unqualified to teach anybody. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, this, I agree that this was a completely inappropriate act. And really, he was democratically elected. He's our democratically elected prime minister. I don't see how our country is becoming less of a democracy through his leadership. But uh, other than that, I mean, this is sort of a, a, an alarming trend that we're seeing in our schools. I, I actually recall experiences of being in school when Mike Harris was, uh, was premier. I, I recall my teachers uh, sort of feeding us that kind of propaganda. I even know that uh, my alma mater, Dalhousie University, had a, a course introduced in 2010 that was actually about how to be an activist and included, uh, I guess, a unit on how to protest. So mm. this is something that permeates every level of our education and we see it uh, a lot of times in a little more underhandedly perhaps we can take the current uh, review of the BC curriculum here uh, introducing Aboriginal education into all of the subjects uh, including math in an effort that I would say really is just 
politically correct and trendy does not help students learn math. That's a little bit uh, less partisan. But then in these blatantly partisan acts going to protest Stephen Harper, I mean, that is just a, another step uh, really, really far and is not good for kids' critical thinking. To teach the theory of knowledge, you should be teaching your students to be open and debate different, uh, different political opinions and, and form their own opinions. I mean, that I think is what an education should be. Well, I, I don't... <laughs> Theory of knowledge actually is, is far too profound and complex to be taught at that sort of level anyway. I can't imagine she's actually <laughs> qualified to teach it. I'm being serious here. That's a university course at, at, at the very least. It would be no different if students had been taken by a conservative teacher to protest a liberal prime minister. That, of course, would never happen. When these people say the country is being, becoming less democratic, what they mean is it's less the way they want it to be. Thus, they're the anti-democrats. I hadn't heard of Aboriginal math. That's an interesting one. So suddenly four and four is nine instead of eight. And, and I mean, wh how does that work? Uh, essentially, the Aboriginal, they, they want here in BC to introduce Aboriginal forms of teaching into all subjects so as to teach a more inclusive curriculum for all students, I guess, including Aboriginal students. So that uh, includes uh, things like oral traditions, storytelling, uh, more things like that into classrooms. A lot of, let's say, learning in circles instead of learning with the teacher uh, in front of the classroom really effectively removing things that you know are tried tested and true in education especially in math for example rote learning moving away from that and more towards a holistic uh, understanding i've even heard it referenced not specifically in bc but in these kind of progressive trends in our education system that it's okay for the teacher to okay. learn the subject matter along with the students that that would be a good right. thing and well, more Paige, holistic. I've, I've just been uh, they've, my producers handed me one of the questions on the new curriculum for native math um if your tribal leader is given two million dollars of public money why is it that only 55 of those dollars actually reach people who need it that's quite a good question appreciate your time thank you very much indeed thank you